Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another brand new episode of Collider Games Podcast. I'm Dennis Den. I'm here with... Oh, Me, wait. what's up? Yeah. Jack Hind here. How are you? All pleasure. I'll be talking games. And the big boss man. <laughs> Mark Fernandez, what's up? And for the first time, we have our new newest team member join us here on the podcast. You may have been watching his cool videos that he's been, you know, premiering on Collider Games on the YouTube channel. Uh, Caboose, how are you? Good. I'm happy to be here. I'm excited to be on the Collider Games podcast for my first time. Yeah, we're happy to have you and happy to have you on the team. Um, yeah. So let's just get things right out of the gate. It is the reason why we're doing this podcast today instead of yesterday is because a certain very, very large game <laughs> that everyone's been dying to play came out. Small, small indie yeah, western yeah, yeah. or something. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Came yeah. out last <laughs> night at midnight. Yeah. Uh, I know you three have played the game. I'm, maybe, I played it, yeah. I, maybe because I'm like older and like I still need my physical media. I ordered the physical copy. <laughs> You're a psychopath. <laughs> yes. Yes. We, we, so. Which is coming in uh, today, so I'll be playing it later. Yeah. So, you know, let's just start off right now. Uh, first impressions, IGN gave it a 10 out of 10. GameSpot gave it a 9 out of 10. Uh, Business Insider said... I'm convinced it's a game everyone should play. Mm. A lot, a lot of high praise. Yeah. Um, Mark, what, what what are your first impressions of this game? So, for me, when I look at a Rockstar game, I look at it a little bit differently. Um, only because of my experience having worked mm -hmm. there and having worked um, tangentially, it, even though it wasn't my specific game, Having uh, been at Rockstar when we got Red Dead Revolver mm -hmm. from Capcom, and um, and then it was picked up and uh, taken by Angel Studios, which is a game developer that did, um, you know, uh, Midnight Run, um, and uh, based out of, um, and they also did that um, that other game we used to have for the GameCube. Where it's like a post-apocalyptic uh, car car battle game that we oh, used to have. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I forget yeah. what it's called right now. Oh man. Anyway, so Angel Studios uh, and Diego Angel, who was the uh, the boss of it, a Colombian uh, fellow, and that's why back in the early days, if you're like old school rock star head, uh, you probably had a shirt or or something that said Rockstar London, New mm -hmm. York, and Bogota. Right, like mm -hmm. you know, those were the three offices, and Bogota was because uh, Diego Angel was from Bogota, Colombia, and uh, but he's the founder of Angel Studios, and Angel Studios is the developer on uh, Midnight Club and uh, this game that I for some reason I can't remember what it's called, um, and uh, eventually Rockstar bought them, and uh, they became Rockstar San Diego, right, mm -hmm. and Rockstar San Diego um, also developed uh, the ping pong game. And um, the ping pong game was really a demo of the engine to show Sam Hauser, um, here's the possibility for a new engine to get off of renderware, right? Because all the old Grand Theft Auto games were on renderware by Criterion. And here comes Angel with this brand new engine. And uh, the demo for the engine was ping pong. Sam Hauser played it and said, I want that to be a game. That fucking demo is great. Mm -hmm. Hence, we got uh, Rockstar Ping Pong. I don't know if you guys remember that game. Mm -mm. No. Really? Ping Pong? Yeah, Rockstar's Ping Pong game. No. Like, Come on, Caboose, tennis. you remember Rockstar <laughs> Ping Pong, right? Am I alone in this? I mean, it might be before my time. Yeah, I don't know. Why are you asking, you're asking the, the youngest person yeah. to be yeah. Right. yeah, so anyway, hopefully somebody in the comments has played Midnight Rockstar Club. Pain. I played Midnight Club Dub Edition. That was a great oh, yeah. racing Midnight game. Club One of my favorites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so Midnight Club was actually my baby at Rockstar. Uh, Midnight Club 2, very specifically. Um, but, in, but in any case, um, seeing uh, how far Rockstar San Diego Angel Studios took Red Dead Revolver mm -hmm and evolved that IP after Rockstar acquired it and created, I think, one of the funnest games that I can remember playing in the last 10 years, Red Dead Redemption, mm -hmm. specifically yeah. the online stuff, right? Like um, the Bounty Hunter system in Red Dead Redemption was absolutely a blast. Um, the, uh, you know, Storm the Base stuff, like mm -hmm. the Alamo style gameplay was absolute blast. Uh, then the zombie expansions were incredible. Oh, Undead Nightmare was so good. <laughs> yes, yes. I, uh, Undead Nightmare was absolutely spectacular. Um, you know, this is a game, this is a highly anticipated game, you know? Um, but so 
I had all of this stuff in my head going into it. I pop it in uh, the cons. Pop it in. I downloaded it. Um, yeah, I you know I downloaded the game, and then the game starts. And having worked at Rockstar, and having uh, known Sam and Sam, I think Sam Hauser is the most creative person I've ever worked with in my life. You know, uh, all due respect to Caboose and to Jack and to <laughs> Christian Harloff and Dennis. And Mark, you know, it, this is something special. There's people that are just built differently, mm -hmm. you know, and Sam Hauser is built differently. And, um, you know, he was very inspired by a guy named Don Simpson. And Don Simpson is a producer, a film producer, who produced Beverly Hills Cop, Top Gun, stuff like this. And he invented um, a, a school of art that is known as high concept, right? So yeah. that was like his methodology of coming up with creative pieces was having high concept stuff, you know? So, and Sam obviously took a lot of that and adapted a lot of that philosophy into, in, you know, into games, right? So for example, Grand Theft Auto 3, the opening of Grand Theft, Grand Theft Auto 3 is heavily inspired by the movie Heat, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like very, very similar when you get the situation with 8-Ball and, 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 and the bridge and the whole shootout and the, and the truck, it's all inspired from Heat, mm -hmm. right? Uh, of course, Vice City, Miami Vice, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, you know, San Andreas, uh, Colors, and and Boys in the Hood, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Um, with this one, man, and I love this direction. Mm -hmm. You know, the first thing that I got out of it is that I was in the Hateful Eight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my God, me too. <laughs> I completely agree. Right, Caboose, are you with me on this one? Yeah, I felt it felt so Tarantino esque, like yeah, with the dialogue yeah. and everything, right from right from the start. Yeah, yeah. So it, you know, so I can just hear Sam's voice in my head saying, "Fernandez, make it feel like the fucking hateful eight, or I'm gonna <laughs> fucking kick your ass," you know. And uh, and like I think th that's great direction, you know. And and um, in the opening scrawl, when you're like in this beautiful snow environment, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and uh, in beautiful 4K, mm -hmm. right? Uh, do, Caboose, are you playing it on a 4K uh, system? Yeah, yeah, I'm playing on the uh, the Xbox One X. All right, cool. Yeah, um, it's absolutely great. It's absolutely great. Did we hook him up with that one? Uh, no. Okay, because uh, yeah. we we should let the fans know at some point that we're going to give a bunch of Xbox One Xs away. Yeah, we have two of them oh, coming yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it's just going to keep going. We're going to start doing prizes with the fans and. Yeah. Getting people to subscribe, mm -hmm. do cool stuff, yeah. and start. Yeah, make, so make sure you're subscribed to the yeah. channel and the podcast. Yeah, yeah, because good things are coming. We're going to start dropping. We're going to start bombing uh, Xbox One X's at you. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, man, it was. I was inside the hateful eight, you know, yeah. um, down to the whole thing about getting like lost, stuck in the house, mm -hmm. uh, the dialogue. Um, you know, this whole, um, you know, this whole drama with the Driscolls obviously is not really Hateful Eight style, yeah. but you can see that it's set, it sets the table, yeah. you know? It's giving you a villain almost as well. It's giving you something to go against and compare against. Yeah. You're right. The opening is like a movie. Yeah. Like it, you just get immediately immersed into it as well. And I like that you can change it so that you can change your, your heads up display on the screen. So mm -hmm. if you don't want your map on there consistently and you really just want to, I mean, I don't have the 4K TV. Mm -hmm. right. So I would love to be playing this on a 4K TV right now after realizing how indulgent the game truly actually is. Yeah. I mean, from the snow to the way that you're shooting, um, I, I, watching people play it is just as in is just as invigorating as playing it yourself as well. Yeah. So the way that they've made this game look and the way that they've made this game feel is uh, something that I'm. I, I just want to explore it more. I don't like the fact that there's no online yet, though. It's the same thing yeah. with the it's Fallout. Be not yet. Not yet. Yeah. Gotta wait. Yeah. November. Yeah. And they and November they've is. gotta build it because I, yeah. I do remember when I played the the first game. The online, even when it came out, wasn't ready yet. No. Like a lot of areas yeah. weren't developed yet. Uh, some of the the systems weren't totally uh, polished. Yeah. And so, and, and what you say makes total sense about uh, being him being inspired by films because the first Red Dead Redemption was definitely inspired by the proposition right. uh, by John Hillco, who you know they even hired to do like a I think it was a twenty or thirty minute short film using the Red Dead Redemption engine. So nice. and the storyline has echoes of the proposition as well. So. Uh, I'm excited based on what you guys are talking yeah, about. Yeah, and uh, uh, Caboose, how many hours did you put into it so far? Uh, the Probably, honestly, like three or four. I haven't sunk too much time into it, but like in the little amount that I've played, like you can already get that feeling like, okay, 
this is it. Like, yeah, I've played a lot of video games in my time, but <laughs> this feels, especially for the next gen console, like as far as we can push them, and it is like the pinnacle of video games for me. It is, it's, it's incredible. Like, uh, just yeah, the horses. So good. The horse, the, remember, Dennis had one issue about how you rode horses yes, in Red Dead. Yes, yes. Oh, my biggest issue well, in, Red the Dead, in Red Dead Redemption? Yes, yeah. the okay. first one. Yeah. Uh, have they changed it at all? So, so look, we'll get into gameplay okay. in one second. Um, without spoiling any of the content stuff, um, the, the sort of intro missions mm -hmm. um, are really kind of like... Uh, it's funny because it kind of reminds me of like a television show that people say, like Bloodline or something, mm -hmm. like, hey, this is a slow burn. You know, like they don't give you all the mechanics at once and say, go at them. Mm -hmm. They, It is a very slow paced intro, you know, so um, but it does a really good job of teaching you all the mechanics that you basically need to know the shooting, the writing, uh, the interactions with objects, the inventory systems and all these kinds of things. Maybe we'll get into in a second. But overall, uh, Caboose, what did you think about the intro? I, I loved it. Like you said, like you get that hateful eight vibe, even just the way that the characters interact from each other. Like I feel like in terms of writing, it felt like I was almost experiencing a Tarantino game almost. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it just it was it was really, really good. And and yeah, I like that, you know, um, same with Red Dead Redemption, the, the first game, the opening missions are kind of they're they're a tutorial, but they're also immersive. You know, yeah. it's not like it's just it, you're really dragging along here and you just want to get to the point where you have that freedom. Like, I enjoyed what I was doing, and I felt, like, yeah. involved. So I like that. And, and, like, you know, there's a lot of these uh, rock star tropes that are starting to, like, always be there. It's like, it's, like, it, it's like when you look at a Picasso, you know, okay, this is a Picasso or Mondrian. This is a Mondrian. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it, the style is the first thing you see, you know? Um, I think now every single of these rock star open world games always starts the same exact way, which is, like, you... And an NPC that it probably, and this is, you know, conjecture, but you'll probably have to end up killing at some point, <laughs> um, you know, go on this little mission together and it teaches you navigation. And as you're going through the navigation process, they're telling you some kind of story, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. so it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like that proactive cutscene where you're moving through space in the game and the guy is like riding shotgun with you and telling you, hey, you know, this and that and this and that and this and that. <laughs> and, you know, and, and you get it in this game too, but it does a really nice, it's a very effective tool. I'm not, I'm not knocking it at all. It, it, it gives you a really nice introduction to the lore of the game and like the context of where you are. And like, you know, the sort of white out snow thing mm -hmm. is really, really, really cool, especially in 4K. Yeah, it's like having a narrator with you whilst you're going through it. Yeah, it's like yeah. somebody's reading the book yeah, for yeah. you. We started, like doing, that. We started doing that. I, I believe in, in, in as early as Grand Theft Auto 3, you can see that. You can see that same mechanic mm -hmm. of being in the car and having the guy next to having you talking you. to you. Yeah. yeah. It's enjoyable as well. It's yeah. a good way to have so, it. So, Caboose, let's talk about the gameplay a little bit. Uh, there's no spoiler in that, right? You can talk about the gameplay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I think what I love about Red Dead Redemption 2 is, like, for the first time, like, I feel like I'm not playing as this character. I am, like, Arthur. You know, mm -hmm. you have to take care of him. You, you got to bathe. Yeah, you gotta, yeah. Otherwise, the town people are going to know that you stink and not <laughs> want to be around you. Yeah. Uh, if you're in, like, warmer weather areas, you got to make sure you're not bundled up. Otherwise, that affects your health. And mm -hmm. the same thing applies when you're in, like, the Stony Mountains. You got to make sure you're wearing a heavy yeah. jacket. So cool. So I love that. I love that you're basically, yeah, you're, like, living out this game. And as the Arthur. food. And the food, right? Yeah. It's like. Uh, yeah, of course. You know, so in the game, and I don't know if we had this in Red Dead Redemption, the first one. Um, I mean, I don't remember playing it like this, but you have to eat in this game. Or yeah, else I you don't start. think you had to in the first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you have to eat. Yeah. yeah. You have eat. to eat. You, you have, have to, to drink. Look after you have to drink character. as well. Yeah. You have to. Uh, like in Fallout 76. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have to drink and eat. I think like it's Star the Wars same. Galaxy it's the same. style. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah I, like I think it's just like find enough sustenance, and when the meter starts blinking red, like eat something mm -hmm. and like, you know. Which, you know, to me sounds like something like it could turn a little bit tedious. Um, even though it's cool, to Caboose's point, it makes you feel like you are that character. I just wonder if it's going to carry over into online. I hope it kind of doesn't. Like, yeah. I hope it doesn't either in that sense. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to look after your character that much when it comes to wanting to, like, play with your friends and play online. You don't want to have to, oh, yeah. hey, guys, I gotta wait, eat. i got to yeah. go <laughs> eat something. Hey, does yeah. anyone have food? <laughs> 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 Give me some food. Yeah. Somebody cook something. And somebody look, I cook. doubt that they'll do that. I doubt that, <laughs> that, 
you know, there's some mechanics just like in the first one. Um, it's funny for me to say the first one because for me the first one is Revol- Red Dead Revolver. Bruh. Right. So while you're there, I get a lot of people saying that. I've already seen the debate as well. This isn't Red Dead. This isn't the second Red Dead. This is the third one. Would you the consider third. the third? This is the this third. This is the third one. Yeah. 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 yeah I mean, uh, you know, there's Red Dead Revolver. Yeah, which was the which first. has the same character that is the lead in Red Dead Redemption. Mm-hmm. And I believe this character is different. Or, yeah. or no. this is a prequel. Oh, this oh. is he was part so of the, the gang that uh, yeah. that uh, what's his face John Marston's John, yeah. uh, father was part of. Correct. And so you see him as a child. Oh, so it's I a see. prequel. Okay, yeah. okay. Because Marston is in Red Dead Revolver too. I think. Uh, I didn't play Revolver, but he's the he's, he's the main the character Red for Dead. Yeah, Red Dead Redemption. Redemption. Well, yeah, yeah. It was around and the he's, same. He's in Red Dead too as well. He's a part of Dutch's gang. You see a younger. Yeah. version of John Marston. Yeah. So. yeah, so the character of Dutch was I thought was pretty interesting. What did you think about Dutch, uh, uh, Caboose? I like his character too, and you know, I, I, I like as well that um, you kind of feel this group of outlaws like they're all a family, because there's this moment, this why, not to get into too much spoilers, but like, you're off to do a mission together, and as you're riding, like, Dutch gives this speech of like how much you know, he, like, he loves this. And he just gives this yeah. speech about, hey, I love what you're doing and what you're doing. And you feel the camaraderie between everyone. So I like I like Dutch's character so far, and I want to see where they're going to take him. What, I, what I'm mochi- most interested in with Red Dead 2 here, especially because John Marston is involved, is are we going to see, like, the breaking point that leads us into mm. the first game mm. with, uh, with, with John Marston? And I wonder if they'll carry that over here. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the story. You know, when 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 you look at just the gameplay itself, uh, to me it feels, um, I, I'd say, pretty much identical to Red mm-hmm. Dead Redemption. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the shooting mechanic is a mechanic you're going to be very familiar with. It's the one in GTA V. It's the one in Red Dead Redemption. That sort of left trigger auto aim. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You know? Yeah, you have the auto. Could you, um, could you slap the hammer in Red Dead, the first one? Because in this, the way that you can... Pull it, and then he's got his revolver. And just no, no, yeah, yeah, it's called it's called Dead Eye. No, yeah, there's Dead Eye as well. But when you're actually you're like the shooting, six shooter. yeah, the yeah. six shooter that you have, you can spam through it when you're not in Dead Eye as well, just as a normal mm. clocking gun. But I couldn't remember if you could do that in Redemption if you had a revolver or if it was. I can't single, remember. I, I mean, I. Dead Eye is the only uh, like sort of alternative shooting mechanic yeah. that I can think of right now. Do they have that in this one, Caboose? Uh, yeah, no, the Dead Eye is the back. Dead and you back. Actually, yeah, yeah, Dead Eye is definitely back. I used it for sure. It was great. Yeah, so I, I know what Jack's talking about. So if you if you have um, a revolver and you're not aiming in, but you just hip fire, yeah. you can like spam all six shots, like you know you would see an outlaw do. Yeah. Gotcha. And I don't remember if that was something you'd do in the first game. So I like the addition of that. I thought that yeah, makes I, really I cool. mean from what I, I, awesome. I read and heard that the the gun mechanics they fixed it to make it more realistic. Not fixed it, but changed it to make it more realistic. So something like a shotgun, you actually have to pump the shotgun before mm, you yeah. fire and you get the repeater rifle as well and with the repeater you watch him as he shoot like do yeah. that yeah, 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 yeah. that yeah. way as well yeah, so it's I a mean, lot more all that detail like Caboose was saying before the clothing the the holster mm-hmm. the ammo belt mm-hmm. Uh, where you put the gun on the horse. I mean, the detail in this game is absolutely astonishing. You know, look, this is only a first impression because I've only played maybe two or three hours. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't even get that far into it, so this really is a first impression. Yeah, yeah, so it's like I haven't, like, unlocked, you know, like in every open world game, you know, there comes a point where, you know, they hold you by the hand and then they set you loose. Mm -hmm. I don't feel, I think I'm set loose. But I'm not 100% sure if I am. I mean, I, I read that the first part is they actually constrict you to a, a specific uh, part of the map before yeah. opening up the rest of the world. Right, right, you. right, right. Yeah, which is which is very common. Yeah. So I think I'm still in that constricted yeah. part. Um, but, you know, another game mechanic I thought was a lot of fun was the melee combat. Mm. Yes. Yeah. 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 Go ahead, Caboose. Sorry, sorry to cut you off, no, no, Mark. No, go, but, for um, it, go for it. But yeah, the combat is is great. Like you feel every punch, and mm-hmm. it's not just like you just punch back and forth. You got to block. You got to maintain yourself a little bit so you don't yeah. get knocked out. And I remember there was a mission I was doing where a guy was choking me out, and I just wasn't trying to break free fast enough, and I died. Like he just he <laughs> choked me out and he got me. So yeah, you got to be everything in this game. Like you have to be hands-on is nothing like you said mark where they hold your hand a little bit they're, they're like listen go out into this world you have full control here but with that there's a little bit of responsibility and you got to make sure you know what you're doing otherwise you're going to get yourself killed and the combat especially in this game is awesome like you feel every hit it's just it's it's great 
Yeah, and like the shooting stuff was fun. There's this one mission early on where you, it's kind of like your first like um, sort of medium scale like uh, camp invasion, you know, with no spoilers. Yeah. Um, and I was right back to the old game, you know, like the dodging, the dead eye, the looking over the corners, the uh, auto aim to the belly and then mm -hmm. move the joystick just a little bit up to get to the, the headshot. headshot. So you, yeah. You're talking about one of the, again, not really spoiled, but one of the first ones where you go and get, you, you like scat, scat out the camp and then you have to attack the camp. It's a second one. Okay, maybe we're talking about the first one again. We don't want to spoil it. But when we were playing that um, this morning, one and one only thing that did slightly bug us with the gameplay was that if you found a place to stand and take cover, there was like three other members of the gang in the exact same cover as you, and it got slightly frustrating. Hmm. So we would they be would, in like, one. Follow you they follow you there. one or two of them would like be there. Or normally, if you would go to and take a cover, the yeah. NPC would normally move and go find somewhere else. These ones won't. They're yeah. there and they're there and then so if you go somewhere else and then like some of them follow up alongside of you and you're trying to shoot like between two people that was one only thing maybe that just happened yeah could, just could, by could luck look, type, be, or like could, unluck type of thing yeah yeah it could be a random thing I, yeah the uh the npc the uh, sort of squad ai and the enemy ai so far has been pretty good mm -hmm. you know um but look again my big critique with the game so far and it's not really that big a critique, it's just a reality check, is that I can log on to multiplayer, mm -hmm. right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, besides that, I mean, I just, I feel like I haven't scratched the mm -hmm. surface of the game. It already looks beautiful. It's already very stylistic. Uh, the combat's already interesting. The horse riding has always been good, mm -hmm. you know, from the first game. Um, yeah, so I'm very, very excited about, you know, doing my ritual, and uh, you know, turning on the old 4K projector, you know, making sure that the you know controller has enough batteries, and giving it a solid six, seven hour playthrough. Which I'm sure all of us will this, this weekend, weekend. This weekend <laughs> is yeah. going to be yeah. Red Dead weekend. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you, Mark, because we can actually we talked uh, about this last week with with Call of Duty about the single player. You just mentioned you can't log on to multiplayer. Are you do you hop into the multiplayer like fairly early in when you get a game that has both a single and multiplayer cuz I tend to play the single player campaign all the way through, Halo, Call of Duty, all that stuff. Once I finish, then I hop into the multiplayer. Well, for me, I always I'm a multiplayer guy, okay. you know, like coming from an MMO background and coming from like an NBA 2K Madden obsessive and and obviously with you know very you know not a secret my favorite game Star Wars Galaxies, um, all these games have one thing in common is like they all have incredible PvP. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, like FIFA is a great PvP game. So is Madden. Mm. You know, it's like you know UFC. Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, like PvP it. is my thing. Okay. Yeah, you know that's where I get you know kind of like my rocks off, mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, Red Dead Redemption had incredible, incredible PvP. It was groundbreaking because Red Dead Redemption, you got to remember, came out before, um, you know, Grand Theft Auto V's uh, revolutionary PvP system or online system is really based on the Red Dead Redemption one. So I can't – now that, Red, you know, Grand Theft Auto V online has been such a huge hit. I mean, th this is a game that's very, very popular. Do you play Grand Theft Auto online, um, uh, Caboose? Oh, yeah. I sunk in a ton of hours with that game. A lot of my friends were, were really excited for it. So I can't – I can't wait. Even with Red Dead Redemption, I put in – I don't even know how many hours playing online in that mm -hmm. game. So I'm beyond excited. Yeah. Online to come. yeah, GTA 5 with the motorcycle clubs and then building a business. That yeah. online was pretty much the majority of the times the only reason why I ever wanted to play GTA 5 as well. Yeah, look, GTA 5 is an incredible storyline. Yeah. And I'm sure that Red Dead Redemption will also have an incredible storyline. But for me, what gets me really excited about this game is A, seeing how many players you can fit on one server. Because I, mm -hmm. I believe for Red Dead Redemption, it was 32. Yeah, I think it was 32. Yeah. You know, so I'm hoping you can at least cross a hundred. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not sure how many they're going to be. I, I actually haven't read anything. Have, that's, that's have, have, have any of you guys heard anything about how uh, many players? No, I mean the details have been pretty scarce about the online. Mm -hmm. I mean the thing is, like you mentioned, so Red Dead had the first one had had the online component. Then for GTA V, they they learned and built off of that to make the GTA V one, and now they built 
they're building the Red Dead Redemption 2 off of the GTA 5 yeah, that's model. Be so, great. Er- so everything that they learned from 5, now they're going to improve on for, for this game. How yeah. many players can you get on GTA 5? If I remember correctly, it went far off of 32. Caboose, do you know of any chance? Yeah, I think it was 32 yeah. as well. Uh, I, let me check. Because I'd remember pulling up the social bit on the side or like when you hit down like three times to bring up the map, make it bigger, and then it would bring down everybody that was in the server. For and five? Yeah, for five. Yeah, if you hit the down on the D-pad like three times, it would run through them. And yeah. then you'd see it. Was, I'm pretty sure it was about 32. It normally looked about yeah, that Yeah, so look, I mean, but now it's kind of like 32 isn't bad. You know, um, Battlefield kind of pushes pushes that to 60, right, to 64 or whatever it is. Um, and then, of course, Fortnite, I think now is set, set the standard at 100, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like if you can get to 100 is now, now for me, that's the gold standard. Mm-hmm. In, 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 in COD 4, what's the server size for the, for the Battle Royale? Uh, they, pushed, they made it 100 now, right, in Blackout? Yeah, it's 100. It's 100 players. Is, is it 100? Yeah. I, I didn't know if it was 88. During, the beta, the, was during the beta, it was only during like 60. The, yeah, during, no, during the beta, it hit 70 or something. Okay. But I'm pretty sure now they've popped it to about 100. Because when you're in that deploy stage, it says like 97, 98 over to the right. Oh, right. Um, so okay. they've pushed the servers now to That's 100, good. I'm pretty sure. So look, um, now we're deep in the weeds. But um, I'm hoping that uh, Red Dead gets to 100 people servers. Yeah. Cause that'll be a lot of fun, you know. We clan up. We should do a collider clan. That was well, yeah. yeah. Caboose, yeah. you you have both systems, don't you? You got the Xbox and the PlayStation, yeah. Cause you I, do the Spider Man stuff. Yeah, I do, but I, I did get Red Dead on Xbox cool. though. Unfortunately, yeah, I don't know me too. Got That's fine. Yeah, yeah, I'm cool. on Xbox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we've got. Je- yeah. Je- cool. Jack, Jack will be on Xbox pretty soon. No, nope. yeah. <laughs> still on the PlayStation. Yeah. Still uh, on the PlayStation. They said the Xbox is better. It has much better uh, uh, online infrastructure. Uh, Especially for the One X, like that is the best the game can look on the One X. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Red true. Dead Online still is going to be capped at thirty-two. Yeah. Okay. Thirty-two. Yeah. For uh, for uh, two. Yes, for two. Okay. Well, look, that's a uh, quality over quantity, maybe. You know what I mean? It also depends. Do they give you like in Red Dead Redemption One? Do they give you the whole map? Well, yeah, and also, I'm can you sure have, they give you the whole map. Can you have thirty-two friends who all take up that one server? I'm sure you could. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm sure you could. If you had yeah, a team of like thirty, yeah. that would be that I mean, would I be just, pretty cool. I just can't create. I can't wait to like create posse's like you used to do in yeah. Red Dead Redemption yeah. One. You, know, you get a group of six people. You're all a bunch of outlaws and yeah. just run around the map taking control and stuff. Oh, <laughs> yeah, man, I'm just so stealing stuff. from people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. stealing from trains, wait. banks. Le- yeah, le- all of it. You know, leveling up. I loved getting the bounties put on me, and then like. Go into one of the forts and just like, oh, like yeah. manning down the fort and just waiting for all the other players to try to come take you mm-hmm. and taking that defensive position, that high ground, mm-hmm. as it were. Um, and uh, yeah, look, um, Red Dead Redemption Two is out, you know, and um, I, I can't remember the last time I saw a game reviewed this positively. You know, maybe Grand Theft Auto, Spider Man. <laughs> I. Spider Man got great reviews, but it's not getting it's not getting uh, Red Dead Redemption it's two not getting stuff. 10 yeah, out of 10. I think this Red Dead this 10 is like out of game 10s, yeah. changer type of reviews, yeah. like yeah. in terms of like this is a pinnacle. Yeah. Of Vice City got a ten, I believe, on uh, IGN too. Uh-huh. Um, I think Grand Theft Auto. I actually think Red Dead Redemption got a maybe got a ten also from some places. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Look, I mean, Rockstar Games is the best. You know, they they don't do a lot of games, but. The ones that they do do are, uh, you know, miles above what everybody else is really doing in the space. So it's impressive. I can't wait to play it more. Yeah, people are talking about because of how the expectations are for this game that things like Fallout 76 and Assassin's Creed Odyssey and, and to a certain extent Call of Duty Black Ops 4 are getting yeah. overshadowed because yeah. everyone has been waiting for this giant game to drop. Yeah, to me, Assassin's Creed, and I'd love to hear Caboose's thoughts if he's played it, but to me, Assassin's Creed is washed. Is it? I mean, In my opinion, it's I a I haven't played franchise. every single one, so I haven't gotten burned down on it. I'm really enjoying uh, Odyssey, and yeah. it's to me, it's not even really Assassin's Creed. I mean, they use yeah. the game engine and the play mechanics, but like the whole setting and environment and, you know... But it's the same it, game. It's like, go assassinate people and like... Yeah, but I mean, even that is like... A lot of it's more exploration. They they took a lot of stuff from like Witcher Three and Mass Effect and the other games that are similar, and, and they've incorporated them into the Assassin's Creed style. Mm. So yeah, I mean it is the Assassin's Creed game technically by name, but you could literally take off, take the Animus crap out, which I, I don't like, 
and you know maybe take out some of the a little bit of the assassination stuff and you could just that would be its own franchise yeah got it yeah i i i haven't played or, or um odyssey okay. yet uh, I have heard great things, and but I do agree. What what happened with Assassin's Creed, the problem that I think we came with it, is they tried to Call of Duty it in that yes. they came out with a new one every year. Mm. And it's just that there's only so much work you can put into a franchise like that where it's an open world and everything and have it be a yearly thing. So like from Assassin's Creed 3 onward, there was a good string of games that people just weren't really happy with. And then I think right with Origins, they were like, okay, we need to innovate here and, you know get some evolution with the Assassin's Creed franchise. So that's where they took off. And from what I can tell with Odyssey, it's so far removed from what you would know from an Assassin's Creed game that if I didn't tell you the title of the game and you watched gameplay, you're like, yeah. what is this? This is a new IP. So, yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, Black Flag I liked. Yeah, I mean, I, I played I heard Black that Flag. I was good too. And yeah. Uh, yeah. I enjoy the ship combat in Black Flag. I like the ship combat even more in, in Odyssey. Okay, they brought that back? Yeah, mm-hmm. so... you. you and the map is huge too, and you can travel around, and so you don't have cannons, so you have to basically have people who have bow and arrows and and javelins mm. on your ship to attack uh, other ships. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I should check it out. Maybe yeah. I should check it out. Like, look, I think Red Dead's gonna take up a lot of my time. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. Good luck finding any yeah. time. That's sixty hour <laughs> game. Yeah, and I still like playing a lot of VR. You know, I've been having yeah. a lot of fun with VR, even at the office. We've been having fun with Creed. Creed, yes. uh, and then me and Thad have been playing Rick and Morty, the what? R- the virtual reality. So yeah. much fun. It's like a puzzle slash escape room. Yeah, I, when have you been playing this and why? While you're why gone. The while while you're being gone. Extended? <laughs> Frank, we told Frank about it. He's dying. Like after this. Yeah, oh, I bet. Uh, yeah, we playing? have to go get it no, going. No, no, we're going to get him to play because yeah, we, we, me and Thad have been teasing it to him. So uh, mm. that game's a, a lot of fun. Do you play any VR caboose? Um, you know, the last time I played VR, I was playing the Batman Arkham one. Mm-hmm. It's a good one. It, it's very and that simple. That was really cool. Very simple game, but it's yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, we got to get you, we got to get you down here uh so, you know, so people know um, you know, I'm very glad, you know, as the owner and CEO of Collider to bring Caboose onto the team. And uh we're going to have him uh visit the office um at some point in November. Get a little bit more acclimated, mm-hmm. and then try to work uh, to have him here a lot more, you yeah. know, and and uh, get you know get Caboose growing and all the stuff that we're doing. Look, we're doing you know we're making our own games, you know, and right now we've announced one, mm-hmm. you know, Twin Peaks VR, yeah. uh, which we're very excited about. A collaboration with Showtime and David Lynch. Got a great um, response at the Festival of Disruption. Awesome. The Festival of Disruption. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So look, we're not just talking about games. We love them so much, we got to make them too. <laughs> you know, it's like, what's, what's the point in talking about it if you can't actually give it a go yourself, right? Uh, yeah. Put your, put your money where your mouth is, yeah. right? You can't just... Uh, we live in a culture of critics, and um, I like to balance that with like also having it be a blended culture of creators as mm-hmm. well, right? So Critics and creators. Critics and creators, right? So we can all live together. Uh, in harmony and stuff like that. <laughs> but look, we have two other games that we're working on that are not yet announced. Also in VR, both of them, um, which I'm very, very excited about. And I can't wait to get, you know, Caboose in the mix on all that stuff that we do too, because it's not just playing video games, it's also making them here at Collider. Yeah. yeah. I'm very excited. I can't, I'm, I'm super hyped cool. to be part of the team. So, um, Caboose, you know what? You know, one thing that we should definitely get Caboose to play um, is Skyrim in VR. That is, that is Ooh. so much fun. You have Skyrim in VR? Oh, yeah, and so he has Fallout fun. 4 in VR. Yeah, Fallout 4 in Skyrim in VR. There. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah. If you think they're immersive while you're just playing it, like in VR, it's even more immersive. You, you'd lose me. If you put, if you put me in Fallout 4 in VR, <laughs> that's it. It'd be you're, game over. You're like you collecting me for a junk. weekend. We just see you no collecting idea. junk yeah. left First and right. of all, ha, ha, who's played Fallout 4 here? Oh. Yeah, yeah, we've all yeah, we, yeah, we, we big all Fallout 4 fans. Caboose, have yeah. you played it? Uh, I haven't, I haven't like beaten it or anything, but I played it. Okay, so so yeah. without too many spoilers, um, you know, the story of Fallout 4 is basically you got to go look for your lost son. child, yeah. right? Yes. So your stolen son. Your yeah. stolen son. So I had never played, um, like I had bought it and tried it for ten minutes and just wasn't into it, like on a two dimensional screen surface. But when I got it on on VR, Fallout 4, because Fallout 4 came out before Skyrim, so you know Fallout 4, 
you know, do what everybody else does when you're playing on the PC. You mod the shit out of it, right? You get all oh, the yeah. graphics enhancements <laughs> yeah. and, you know, all that stuff. But there's one particular mod um, that I ha I can't live without, and if anybody listens to the rule of two, you know what I'm talking about, which is Star Wars, right? So there's a great mod for Fallout 4 in VR where you can uh, have the lightsaber. As a weapon? As yeah, a weapon. Yeah. Oh my as a God. melee weapon? Yeah. It, it, <laughs> and they have different hilts, too. <laughs> They have different hilts that you can what? have. Like, yeah, you can have. Anakin's. Can you get? Can you get Darth Maul's? Can you get a double-ended one? You can get yeah. double-ended one. No oh my god! Why? Yeah, 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 it's absolutely <laughs> incredible. Ren's. And the crafting of it is really sophisticated, right? So you got to yeah. get all the right materials. You got to go to the crafting station. You got to. Like, oh, to actually craft the lightsaber. You don't yeah. just get modded and just get given one. You actually then have to go find all the bits yeah. that the way you yeah, normally yeah, yeah, do. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got to go. That's cra insane. That's yeah. outstanding. Yeah, it's an incredible mod, and it makes the game so much fun. Yeah. When you're going through the story line and like in my head like I'm like a you know like a Sith Jedi that got transported <laughs> here and like you know I'm, I'm like on some weird head trip and I'm going through the story of trying to look for my son and all this and and it's a great great story Fallout 4 it really is yeah, yeah. and and when you're in there you know and like when you go to that uh, city that's like the baseball stadium converted into a town oh yeah, yeah. That Diamond City Diamond, Diamond City, city. Yeah. yeah I mean walking around Diamond City walking up to the merchants like you know it, it, in it, VR in VR yeah. oh, it's, I can't I just want to <laughs> yeah. do it now it's amazing on the HTC Vive it has great fidelity it's absolutely incredible it's absolutely incredible and one of my favorite gaming experiences of all time and I'm not even a Fallout fan only to be outdone by doing the same exact thing in Skyrim, mm -hmm. where you also can do the lightsaber mod. Yeah, I was a oh, bit. Uh, Skyrim and Fallout were two of my yeah, yeah bigger games. Yeah. So as well. anyway, um, uh, point is, uh, we got to do. People aren't that excited about VR, which which kind of bugs me out. Like how? I, I think once people actually experience it, yeah. that's when they'll get into. It. I mean, everyone that who, do, you know did the Twin Peaks VR demo. You know, some of them I'm sure played VR, some didn't, and then they were blown away by the experience of it i think it's just right now vr because of the amount of equipment you have to get yeah. for it is is high barrier to enter yes it, yeah. it's not only that as well i also think um we've kind of been i could be coming out and left field but we've kind of been spoiled with what we expect vr to be in the way that we've seen it in movies in tv shows the way that people have spoken about it and then to get the VR that we have now, like I think the average Joe is expecting to be able to put on a headset and feel like they've been put into Ready Player One. And right. obviously the VR will get there soon, but it's not there yet. So I think that's the reason why a lot of people can't justify paying the amount of money they have to for a VR because they believe that if they put their headset on, they should be transported into the Oasis. Yeah. I, I think do you have a VR? Caboose, do you have a VR headset? I, I don't have a VR headset, but I think also what it comes down to, branching off of what you were saying on just the idea that when people actually get their hands on a VR kit and like they can play a VR game, yeah. you really get immersed in that experience. So it's hard to like actually show people a trailer or something for yeah. a VR yeah, game and market it and say, it, so, uh, you have to play it. Do like, you have a PC that could run it, Caboose? Uh, probably. My, P my PC is pretty, pretty well built. I, I can run some good games on it. So What kind of graphics card is it? Is it like above a 1060, like 1070? Uh, yeah, I think, I think it is a 1070, actually. Okay. So maybe we'll I'll, send I'll a, take maybe a look we, to make yeah, sure. Yeah, but, uh, yeah maybe, uh, maybe yeah. we'll send you one. Maybe we'll get a, a Vive up there, yeah. you know, because there's a lot well, of fun games for it. Yeah, yeah. Like, like I said, playing that Rick and Morty game, like, you're so into it at one point. Like, I wanted to adjust my headset. And that was there watching me, and I had the the controllers. I almost put them down on the yeah. the shelf yeah, yeah, yeah. The in, actual, the, yeah. in the game, <laughs> and I was like, and I stopped myself. I was like, oh my god, if I had just You'd dropped, dropped this, them, <laughs> they would have dropped to the ground and broke or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, that's how real it felt, how yeah. immersed you were. I was like. Oh crap! I can't just put this yeah. down. Dad's like, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. So, so I and I know I know I've talked about this before, but my favorite game in VR, the most sophisticated game there is in VR, is one called Rec Room. Mm -hmm. um, that's built by this company called Gravity Games, and uh, or or is it Anti Gravity Games? And uh, they they have these like dungeon crawlers, right? Like these mm -hmm. like little mods that they built on these little dungeons. And Jeremy Johns and I play it all the time. And, um, you know, it gets really, really intense when you're playing it because it's very, very difficult. It's kind of like uh, Demon Souls. If you die once, you got to go all the way back oh, to the beginning. Yeah. It's brutal. It's yeah. absolutely brutal. And it's very, very challenging. And um, there was this one part where I'm like, you know, as like, uh, you know, um, it, it's like the space uh, themed uh, dungeon. And I'm standing on top of a crate and I'm like shooting, 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 shooting. And then I'm like stepping backwards so like I can avoid the shots. 
and I um, I put my foot at the ed at the edge of the crate, mm-hmm. and I literally thought that I was gonna fall. Oh, okay. But I'm standing on normal ground. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. thought I was gonna fall off to the point where I did drop my joysticks and fell to the floor <laughs> to try to stop myself from falling off the crate. And that's when I realized, okay, I gotta. <laughs> I gotta stop this. Shit. Gotta stop getting too into <laughs> this. <laughs> yeah, it's it's incredible. It's incredible. Yeah, it's coming out. Have you have you seen a little bit off topic? Johnny English, the new film, Mr. Bean's new film, Rowan Atkinson's obviously the third installment. Um, he does virtual reality in it, and in the trailer, it looks like there's a whole scene where he walks out of the office, picks up breadsticks, thinking that they're like actual swords, and he's beating people up at the bakery and stuff. <laughs> it's just like typical, yeah. like Mr. Bean, Rowan Atkinson. It's brilliant. Did, did he say he was going to retire from doing Mr. Bean? Like that's, that's yeah, it. I don't, yeah, Mr. They, Bean. We've never get, we haven't had Mr. Bean for a very long time, and I don't think he's willing to do the character ever again. Yeah. yeah. So you guys wanted to get Dorian in here, right? Yeah, yeah. We'll get uh, Dorian in here. Let me uh, slack him real quick. Cool. Then, uh, um, so yeah, thank you guys. Look, I I, I know. I dominated the conversation just a little bit, but I'm I'm super excited about Red Dead Redemption too. Yeah, we'll you know? talk more about it next week. Yeah, uh, we'll have Caboose on the webcam. Yeah. next week. Yes. So uh, look, we'll clan up. We'll clan up. Yeah. Yeah, I'll use Posse, one of the Posse Xboxes. Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, use, up. I'll use one of the yeah. Xboxes here. We'll just I'll yeah. just buy the you Xbox. Do the, you do the same thing with Fallout 76. Too. Yeah. First of all, we all know you're not buying any Xboxes because you get sent four or five of them a week. <laughs> this guy, I'm gonna buy the <laughs> Xbox. <laughs> No, 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 but he's he's got to get on Fallout seventy six on Xbox because you and me are going to be on Xbox. Yeah, so I've got to uh, I've got to now have to yeah, pick it up on yeah, Xbox. And he's right. got Xbox now. This guy. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to hand the baton off to uh, you know Mr. Dorian Parks, and he'll take it from here. What games are you guys talking about? Uh, Fallout seventy six, COD, uh, the Spider Man DLC, and then we get some Twitter questions oh, as, nice. as well. Very nice. All yeah. right, Mr. Dorian, take take the chair. Thank see you, Mark. You, see you guys soon. See you, Mark. Later, Caboose. All right. Got Dorian coming in here for those of you listening it's on It's your boy podcast. Dorian. What's up, guys? It's your boy Dorian. What's up? What's All up? right. Hold on, hold on. What's, what's A-Town down? What is that? I don't know. It's just something my brother used to say like yeah. a long time ago. I think it's from like an Usher song or something. Yeah, it like, is. Peace yeah. up, A-Town, A-Town down. down. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I managed to catch that. Nice. Um, <laughs> what I was like, wait, I think I do know what that is. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll have Mark back in here talking more Red Dead next week uh, after we get a good good weekend's worth of playing. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, Fallout 76. Uh, beta they just had this past week. My eyes still hurt. It, me, me and Jack <laughs> played it for four hours. Uh, you can check out. We have a mini review on there. On the Collider Games uh, YouTube channel, also the, the entire four hours of us playing. So we're not going to go too deep into this. If you've this. got some spare time yeah, this weekend, yeah. feel free to check that out. Um, but they, they're having two more sessions this more weekend. Than that. Oh, well, this weekend, for just yeah. Xbox, which is one on Saturday, one on Sunday. Then starting on, I think, the 30th, which is, I think, Tuesday, they're going to have PC. PlayStation 4 plus Xbox still. So there's going to be like four four or five more after that. So uh, we'll definitely get a lot more gameplays in because... The ones that you sent, are they the ones for everyone now? Is that when after October 27th it now opens up to everyone? Well, uh, 27, 28 is Xbox only. And and then then 30th onwards. Yes, 30th onwards is everyone else. So everyone else can hop in there. But yeah... Uh, Awesome. A brief overview of kind of what we played. You know, you don't really get far in, in four hours. I mean, to be honest, four hours kind of gets you to you start building a camp, and that's it. Yeah. Um, did Cabo- Caboose? Did you get to play it? No, but I, I didn't gave, get a chance to, unfortunately. But no, I gave but him I the code that he's going to play cool. this this weekend. So. I mean, yeah, the, I, I said it once. I said it. I'll say it a thousand times again. I want to play this game for the multiplayer methods. Um, it. It feels the same as Fallout 4, which I'm happy about. I'm not mad about that at all. I'm excited that the game feels and looks and plays the same way as Fallout 4, but this beta isn't interesting unless I can start building my camp with my friends tomorrow. Yes, because the problem is 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 the single player, not single player, but the 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 storyline, yes, because it's a watered-down version of Fallout 4 because you don't have... Uh, you don't have NPCs, so the storylines aren't as engaging, and then you also... The exploration is different because the map is pretty... They give you a map that shows you where everything is. Yeah. So you still discover areas, but still, 
it, it's less of that kind of one of the, my favorite things in Fallout is like just finding different areas. Yeah, and well, go like, uh, and oh it, my god, what's this? And seeing your Pip Boy map, and then yes. actually. Uh, when you first start it, it's a black map yes. with a few light green outlines. And then once you've done your fallout and you've built your communities and everything, suddenly you look at your trading routes and everything, and it's this beautiful map that you've gone and discovered yes. and created. And you're right, in this, it's uh, it's laid out for you. Yeah. You know where you're going. There's no surprise. You don't get to just walk off and explore and then suddenly... But like I said, I think that's because it's they've they've designed the map. They've been yeah. building to get out of the vault, and so they've sent out scouts who have come back and drawn their maps... Like, what was it, Galileo and the Star Constellations yeah. type of stuff? I think that's what they've had, and so that's why we have now this new map. Yeah, I mean, also, like I said, because a lot of people have played it, and some you, you have a lot of people very upset, diehard, some of the more diehard Fallout yeah. fans are upset. I'm I'm a wait-and-see type of person because we didn't get that experience. There were people on our game in servers. One, we didn't have the our, our uh, headset and mic yeah, uh, plugged in plugged and turned in. on. And we weren't collaborating with anyone. So for us, it was basically a single-player Desolate land. So let's see, you know, like, Caboose, if you hop on on Saturday, I'm going to try yeah. and hop on as well and then see if we can pair up and try and, uh, you know. Do you have it... You have, you have it at home and here, or did yeah. you just log on to it here? No, no, no. You can, because it's tied to your account. In so oh, no, yeah, that's what I mean. So you, But you can't play it here and at home at the same time. Not at the same time, yeah. but okay. separately, yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll play it uh, at home this weekend and then, you know, hopefully record some footage. And, yeah, and, capture and, some. And hopefully get, you know, more of the collaborative aspect of it versus what you and me played, which was almost like a single player. Right? It was very much so. I mean, yeah, like... The reason I enjoyed Fallout, like you say, those NPCs, they were, they put so much pointless shit into Fallout that I love it. Like, yeah. when you go and read all the logs and all the terminals mm. and everything, like, you can just sit there and just, like, enjoy it for a little bit. In this, that's all you have now. You don't get to talk to some of the people yeah. that maybe these logs were written about, or you don't get to go find them. You don't get to have, like what Mark was saying about the GTA, the yeah. way you had a narrator with you. It was very similar with Fallout as well. You'd have your companion who would talk you through yeah. the stories and stuff. And, uh... They, they they were my friends. Yeah. They were my friends on Fallout. You know, the NPCs, you knew yes. the NPCs. You knew where they lived. You knew where they would stay. Um, so, yeah, I, the one, I, I wouldn't even be that worried about playing this beta. The only reason I am worried about it is because you can start building your character yeah. for them once the online opens up, and then you will get a bit of a head start. Yeah, and then also, you know, we need to start playing with other people to see how that changes the experience. The I game. mean, there's a lot of things, like you know, resting or sleep. You can't sleep anymore. You can only rest, rest which is like a real-time rest. They literally black out the screen and you, and you watch your watch health that. bar. You watch your health bar. It's the perfect go, time go. to pack a bowl, pretty oh, much, yeah. is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. well, uh, one, of the Collider, one of the Collider fans actually started a Facebook community group like with people joining and like uh -huh. adding their codes and stuff because they were talking about the Fallout beta and stuff like that, so maybe I could play with them. Nice. Oh, did they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's cool. It's yeah, on yeah, Facebook. Definitely. And Dorian, you you started playing Fallout Four on yeah, Game Pass, right? Yeah, yeah, on Game Pass. I'm, I just got like the first suit. Like I had to hack a password or something uh, like that. Entered the code in a bunch of times. I had to wait a bunch to. That was kind of annoying, but um, got the Fusion Core and then I'm in the suit. And just, how many companions do you have so far? What do you, what are like? Oh, you haven't got so any. Preston no. Garvey. Preston Garvey technically can be considered a companion. He'll come around with the you dog. As well. You had to have the dog. Yeah, yeah I have the dog. dog. Yeah, I got the so dog. You can swat, switch out your companion. Like you uh, can switch out your dog with like. Uh, there's one robot Cogsworth. Uh, he, su he sucks. Yeah. Though. Wait, is that the one you meet at the beginning? Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. He he, he's annoying. He is annoying. That's why I keep him away. Nick Valentine, man. You gotta <laughs> Nick get Nick Valentine, man. First of all, so if you can, okay, losing that dog when I first played Fallout. I, that dog stayed with me for a very long time, and then the dog fucking died. Bro, it died. Bro, bro. <laughs> can you control you it? Can, can you mod, control it? You can't control it, but you can put a mod on that saves dog meat, so that dog meat pretty much can't die and is OP. I promise you, don't put yourself through the pain of losing dog <laughs> Dude, meat. Dude, I, yeah, I can't. I've already lost it. <laughs> yeah, I don't no want to experience that idea. pain again. I stopped playing that game for like three weeks after <laughs> dog meat died, and I was like, right, I'm starting this back up. So there's Josh. no way to save the dog? No, the dog's dead. Once the dog well, dies, the dog's dead. No, I mean, dies. like, like, there's no way, like... Now you can mod him, yeah. Now yeah, you can so, put a mod on him. Okay. Yeah, but in the companions, if they die, they die. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to... I don't care I don't, about don't, anybody else dying, and that yeah. once dog meat died, that's <laughs> heartbroken. Yeah. 
Um, anything else about Fall uh, 76 you want to talk about, Jack? Uh, I think most people can check out the videos that we've oh, already the, done. Oh, the building's a lot better this time oh, around. Oh, yeah. God, the building the last one was a pain in the ass. You had to be like a genius to yeah. work your fingers in that mannerism. But this one, it seems a lot more easier to the, flip the, through. The UI is much better because it's up yeah. top. Yeah, and you up. just scroll there and yeah. it's like, oh, this item, this item. Before and it, yeah, it was it's very... separated better. It was separated by like images before, weren't it? As yeah, well as like farming, weird. you looked at plants and you were like, oh, shit, yeah. where is my doors? It's not in infrastructure. It's not in this. Yeah. It's in, yeah. So it was a pain in the ass. Uh, but I, I think we'll learn more. Uh, Once the multiplayer starts. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's move on. Oh, to... and we get to find out if our stash box yes is can, can or cannot be broken or not. That's yeah. That that's a that's a big no no for me. If 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 it uh, if people can just rob your stash boxes because then be, like yeah, like just... I don't want to stick like an awesome weapon in there and then have it. Well, I think stolen. it's going to get to the point of where you can like build a fort, which then has locks on the doors that yeah. nobody can actually get into, or like has certain well, things that won't well, allow also people. Also, from what I remember hearing when like the game was announced, is that even when you're playing in the online space, I think there's only a max of what twelve people that can end up in your uh, lobby because it's it's still supposed to be treated as like a desolate it's, wasteland. It's, it's definitely yeah, not that many. I don't know what the number is if it's twelve or twenty four. Yeah, or I was wondering if it was going to be a little bit larger. The map is so big attempt. though yeah. that you you just don't run across people unless it's a coincidence or you, you know purposely them. yeah. Or which I think which I think could add to it. You know if that if the the map is that big and there are that little amount of people in an online lobby, so that if by some luck you run across someone then you have the opportunity to maybe yeah, rob them i don't know fight. well i do yeah. like the way that they have that in online mode it's mm -hmm. it's like uh, uh just pass a by yes. stranger and killer or whatever it's called right um where if you both don't react to each other in a in a forceful way you don't have to attack yeah if you start it takes only a, a little certain bit, amount yeah. of your health if you both go against each yeah. other but then if it's just you who starts and it and if you die you only lose your junk you That's only it. lose all your junk you don't lose yeah. your weapons you don't lose your armor you don't lose any special items it's just your junk yeah. okay so yeah uh, I, I think they did that to promote PvP yeah to promote PvP, yeah. I think they try and discourage PvP. Right, what? Just by well, I think now it's like, oh, we can fight, we can have fun, and we don't have to worry about losing all of our shit. That's yeah. the only reason as to why. Because now I wouldn't be as if if I was playing it mm. when I knew I could lose all of my stuff, mm -hmm. I would be avoiding like running people. Or I would or... either be avoiding them, or if I was OP, I'd be robbing everybody left, right, and center. This I mean, way, but I think now, that would be cool, honestly. If, mm. if you can steal their weapons and stuff to, to could, have that. Sort of, because then you're just you're on edge and you yeah. feel build a rivalry legitimately like you're in that post-apocalyptic yeah. world. Like, yeah. hey, you can't trust anyone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, I don't know. So yeah, I can't wait till I start playing with people and we, you know, quest start questing up yeah. and camping up and whatnot. So, all right, moving on. Uh, Spider-Man, the DLC, the first DLC, the heist came out. Uh, Caboose yes. and Doran, you guys both played it. There's a, a review on the channel right now. Yeah. And, uh, uh, Oh yeah. Also, his um, spoiler, yeah. Spoiler speculation. So, so what's the overall consensus about this uh, DLC? I thought it was worth it. Um, I I loved it. It uh, it was a little bit hard for me than Caboose because we downloaded it pretty much at the same time. And I texted him. I was like, Hey, are you where are you at? He was like, I'm almost done, bro. Where are you at? I'm like. Damn, I'm still at the. <laughs> I'm, I'm like two hours behind you. I guess be. I, and I had mine on like the hardest mode, mm -hmm. so it was I, it was taking me a little bit longer. Um, but overall, I really enjoyed it. If it, it took me about four to five hours, mm -hmm. Caboose would. How long did it take you? Yeah, I'd say uh, four hours is like the sweet spot for most people. Mm -hmm. Some people said that they beat it in three, but from what I've heard from most people and my personal experience, is about four hours. To one hundred percent, it that is. How how, how much was it? Uh, um, it's ten dollars standalone. Okay, but if you bad. get the season pass with with all three expansions, it's twenty five bucks total. That's not bad. That's that's not so bad. Yeah. you're yeah. getting like three hours worth of entertainment. Yeah. And yeah. the and the, like the 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 missions like they're side missions of like just uh, similar to what you do in the real story. But the the main missions in this one, I actually I enjoyed them, especially how they incorporated Black Hat and Spider Man when they were mm -hmm. starting to work together at, at, like towards the end. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And Caboose, in your review, I, I saw you're you're a little down on the Mary Jane uh, missions. Yeah. So you do get to play as her in the DLC, and she was my biggest issue with the uh, the main game. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm not I'm not saying I'm not knocking her from like a story or writing standpoint because she's written well and she's incorporated into the story in in a seamless way. But just her gameplay is it just bugs me because you want to play as Spider Man, you want to be swinging through the city, you want to go through that fast paced gameplay, and when you play as MJ, you're always doing this stealth mission. <laughs> 
And yeah. it's just like it slows the game to a halt. And it, it would be better if maybe there were different scenarios that MJ was in. But it's always a stealth mission. Mm-hmm. Every single time you play as her, it's her just sneaking around. You know, maybe the there's a mission. As, yeah. Maybe there was a mission where we had to do like some detective work or something. Uh-huh. We had to do some journalism stuff because she's working for the Daily Bugle. That would be good. But no, every mission in the main game and then in this DLC is a stealth mission. And it just, it bugs me. It's just, it's it's too slow. You're just squatting the whole time. You're squatting. <laughs> yeah. You're squat- yeah, you're just squatting. walking slowly, <laughs> watching <laughs> lights and shit like that, I assume, making sure you don't get I, caught. Yeah, I, stuff. I, I, yeah, in the footage uh, from the video, like, she's like hiding behind boxes. You know, like yeah. yeah, like wood boxes and walking around. And you basically have like this little spider, like uh, spider sonar thing, and you throw it past them, and they're like, "Oh, what's that?" And then you, they, you like, like, they, no, they walk over there, and they're like, "All right, time to go." And then if you sneak up behind them, then, it's, then you can kind of tase them. But yeah, so like, is that like whistling Assassin's Creed? Yeah, yeah like, you can kill like anybody by whistling, just by whistling in yeah. it. Well, that's why, like um, in The <laughs> Witcher Three, when you played as Siri, uh-huh. you weren't playing as somebody who could do anything. You got to play as Siri, who then also kicked ass, but in a much different way she was faster she had a different sword so i can understand where caboose is coming from i i haven't been playing spider-man because well, i'm gonna be real with you it's just not a game that was really that interesting mm-hmm. to me so i didn't want to spend the money on it um but the way that he's talking about the way you have to play as mary jane yeah you're not paying for the DLC reason for, why yeah. i didn't want to buy this yeah. game <laughs> because games are even the yeah that doesn't sound remotely interesting or enjoyable or challenging or fun or like I mean, it's just, not, none like, of it represents in the story, the game. It's, in the story itself it doesn't feel as forced but like Kabu said in the DLC it's like we're trying to you, you're paying more to, to play as Spider-Man you want to do more missions as him not divert and you didn't and pay go. more for yeah. Mary you didn't, Jane yeah, you didn't pay yeah. more for yeah. Mary Jane yeah. but they did also sprinkle a little um, Miles Morales like is this yes. is so spoilers if you haven't um played the Spider-Man game, but it's been out for a month or so, so it's free, I guess it's fair warning. Mm-hmm. But so they did tease uh they did tease a little Miles would call Peter Parker because at the end of Spider Man, like he does get bitten, he does have his powers now. Mm-hmm. So they like he's calling like trying to see like, all right, what do I do? How do I do this? And he actually is using his powers and at his school. So it's like they're kinda I think they're kinda teasing, mm-hmm. speculating like maybe he'll be one of the focuses in the next DLC DLCs. because you yeah. don't just throw in those kind of calls like that without yeah. if you're not teasing yeah. something. Yeah. That, that'd be pretty cool. All right, yeah, uh, uh, go ahead. Sorry, no, sorry. No. I was gonna say I, I don't think we'll full on be able to play as Miles or mm-hmm. anything in a future DLC, but like we might see him in some way interacting using his powers in a future expansion. Mm-hmm. Interesting. All right, yep. another game, uh, another video that you guys uh, put up was the Call of Duty Black Ops Four. I know that uh, Jack has played a bunch of it, and yes. Kabuzi played a bunch of it. Uh, do you play on Xbox? Or I know you have both. So what do you? What, what's your normal go-to, Kabuzi? Do you uh, I, use your I, Xbox? I was given a. I was given my code for the PlayStation. Oh, I do cool, want to yeah. get it on Xbox because I mainly like well, playing I'll it on. I like you as a friend on PlayStation, so that then if we're ever messing about on Black Ops or anything, we can uh, yeah squat up on stuff on PlayStation as for well. sure. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah. But but you're really enjoying it, right, Kabuzi? And you like the blackout mode? Yeah, Blackout is it's the best thing in Black Ops 4 right now for me. Like cuz Black like Call of Duty it's pretty much I I don't really like it cuz it's just been the same thing every year. But that's what like we yeah, you know it. they did the jetpacks <laughs> and then with World War 2 they took those out and they kind of did that World at War style with uh, with Call of Duty World War 2. Yeah. But in Black Ops 4 like they finally did something I feel where they truly innovated and they mm-hmm. added something new. There's a game mode in Call of Duty where I can drive vehicles and, you know, there's a massive map and there's places to loot and people to kill. And it's just, <laughs> it is awesome. It Blackout is so much fun. And I haven't won a single game, but <laughs> I still, I like, I have this urge, like, I need to go back in. I need to keep playing because it just feels so satisfying when you run into someone and there's this intense gunfight and you win it. Like, you yeah. feel like you're the greatest player alive, you know? So you just don't get that feeling when you're playing the normal multiplayer because it's just it's one death out of a million or one kill out of a million that you'll get you know so but blackout's just it's great i love it yeah i'm i i i'm a big call of duty fan i think call of duty and fifa were really well i mean we could go back to like spyro and shit on the playstation but call mm-hmm. of duty and fifa were like really the first games that i got involved in that was like online multiplayer type of stuff yeah. and so the original i mean call of duty modern warfare one and more modern warfare two are still the, the top of the pinnacle of Call of Duty is in my personal opinion. Oh, just FPS is yeah, in yeah, general. Yeah, yeah, couldn't, yeah, I don't disagree. Um, and so coming into this, I was, I, I, I don't, I can't say I prefer the blackout mode, but I do understand where you're coming from in the sense that it's, uh, it's an innovative move 
um, by the team. It's yeah. something that they have never attempted before. And I do very much so enjoy it. I, I love Fortnite as well. I'm not going to say that I hate it. I think it's a shit ton of fun because, like you say, if you get to beat 99 other people, you feel like a fucking champion at the end yeah. of that round, you know? Um, but the multiplayer in this aspect, the reason why I do like it so much is because I couldn't stand the jetpacks in Black Ops 3. Yeah. So getting back to boots on the ground and r- just straight up running around shooting, rooting, tooting, shooting, killing each other. I do love the multiplayer aspect. The best part about Blackout, in my opinion, is the fact that you can couch co-op a duo. That yeah. is the best thing yeah. ever. The fact that me and my mates can sit at home, both of us play a duo squad and go into Blackout um, is something that is really... That's that's one of the most exciting, f- exciting things about the game for me as well. Do you not think it feels incredibly familiar to PUBG? Well, I'll tell you, it's, it's a more optimized PUBG. Oh, could not agree so, more. Yeah, it's like somebody, yeah, yeah, completely gave it a, a platinum makeover. Yeah, and and granted, that's just because of the studio and you know just the, the amount of money, the money that they were yeah. given, right? Um, but still, like, so I, I've been a lot of people have been talking to me like, oh, do you think this is going to be the Fortnite killer? And I don't think so. Never. Fortnite will always be at the tippy top. Yeah. Because first of all, Fortnite's free to play. Correct. But this will definitely, I think bury PUBG once and for all yeah this because, is not gonna bury it yeah that, yeah yeah, yeah. it's just it just runs better yeah. the, the better frames it looks it, better. there's less yeah. glitches uh-huh. it looks better it's more optimized all they need to do is add a third person mode and that's it like bye bye PUBG like it's yeah. over <laughs> that is yeah that, yeah yeah I couldn't agree more would you like the third person mode I think that would be pretty cool yeah, I, I, I agree I doubt they'll do it but I think it would be pretty cool why do you doubt they'll yeah. do it just because then it'll be too similar to all the other battle royale modes that and they probably just they want Call of Duty to be known as an FPS, as the FPS. so they they don't want to they don't want to stray away from that in any way. No, because then people will yeah. be like, why is there no third person in multiplayer? Why can't we get that? How do you, you like know? the choice of guns? I know Black Ops Three was poor, poor for choice of guns. Um, how are you feeling on Black Ops Four? Have you played any multiplayer yet, or have yeah, you really yeah. just been so, killing the blackout? Yeah, no, I played I, I played quite a bit of multiplayer, cool. yeah. and um, yeah, the the choice of guns are pretty good. I mean. It's it's really tough for me because I feel like no matter what I do, it's always a longer time to kill when I'm facing someone than it is for them for me. You know, like I when they're shooting at me, I'm done in two agree seconds. agree more. Why does but it feel I like people shooting. are shooting you with 50 cows? <laughs> yeah, like I could be shooting my entire clip, my, my whole ammunition yeah. bucket into someone and they still got a little bit of health it's, it seems them. headshots are so um in the multiplayer mode like if you can't hit a headshot you lose that battle yeah. if it's you against yeah. them and it seems as though some people now i mean these kids nowadays that are playing that like 12 years old that have jumped up on adderall just have like some of the <laughs> best accuracy on the planet and so sometimes you it's some you could be behind someone and they will still turn around and kill you quicker than you can kill them yeah so that's i like yeah. the, i like the health bar system though that, that, that you can reheal yeah, oh, so I like that. Yeah. yeah, because it it creates a little bit of longer gunfights. It get not that it's exactly like Halo or anything, because Halo is way different. Mm. But at least you know when when you're playing Halo, it's like when you get into a gunfight, it's not boom, 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 you're done. It's okay. Let's how do we strategize here? And with Call of Duty Black Ops Four having the health bar system now, you got to go into fights in that same sort of way. Granted, yeah. there's always going to be just the run and gun, but if you see like you don't have too much health and your stim pack is not ready yet. And this guy you're about to go up against has a full health bar. You got to be like, okay, what can I do here to strategize a little bit and win this gunfight? And I like that. I appreciate that they added that. It's, yeah, being uh, able to see how much it is that they've got. At the top. Do you prefer yeah. um, just the regular mode or um, hardcore? Uh, I haven't played too much of hardcore, actually. So I've just been playing the regular just mode. Just the regular mode. Yeah, yeah. My, my friend Zach, who I've been playing with, he played it when we had the beta and come mm-hmm. in. And we were uh-huh. big hardcore fans for Black Ops 3. But it seems as though this time around, the, uh, the normal mode's actually a little bit more enjoyable, the hardcore mode. Because like I said, with it being the headshot game, like yeah. those people in hardcore right now are just one shots. They're yeah. just, you just have no chance against some of yeah. them, unfortunately. Yeah. And I do appreciate too that the multiplayer uh, as opposed to Blackout, like the recoil patterns on guns are different. So when you're playing Blackout, a gun that would regularly have like no recoil in multiplayer is a bit more bouncy and you have to have more yeah. precision aim because it's, it's a battle royale. You know, you can't have these extremely precision or like these extremely precise guns like yeah. you would in multiplayer. So I like that. Yeah, and the fact you get to pick up all your attachments and everything and then you can mm-hmm. build the gun as you go along and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. All right, guys. Uh, so uh, last segment here, we're going to take some Twitter questions. Dorian, uh, what would you pick out? All right, so James Howlett asked, uh, with Red Dead 2 just landing, when do you realistically think GTA will arrive, the next GTA oh. will arrive? 
I mean, how many years? Uh, it's been five years since GTA Five, right? You let me look at the year, but I mean, think Two about that, four years. Two thousand fourteen. I mean, Red GTA Dead was how many years in between? Almost. I mean, it's been almost. T- it's got to be eight to ten years since the first Red Dead. Well, since Red Dead Redemption. Yeah, let me look at the. I, I say not at least until we get the next generation of consoles. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that's that's yeah. at the earliest. And you mean generation like the Xbox Two or whatever, or like the PS4 yeah. Five, yeah. not yeah. the not the next rendition of one of yeah. the no, PS4s. No, yeah. I think like it'll it. still be on current gen, but they're probably waiting for next gen to release a, a new GTA. Okay, yeah, that definitely. Makes sense. And you know this, you know, look, think about how long it took them to make this game. You know, like. <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're, it seems as though they crammed it all in the hundred hour weeks at the yeah. last couple months, right? <laughs> yeah, you, you got to get your characters to you know brew the coffee or whatever. Right? That, <laughs> that's one of the things like your your character can do is like brew, you have to brew the coffee before you drink. Before it. you can drink, yeah. It. Yeah. Um, let me see here. We got uh, GTA Five was man. Why does this not have the gun? Ready, we got bets. Ready? Dorian, what are we going? I've got five dollars on twenty thirteen. Um ten dollars on twenty fourteen. Caboose. For, for for GTA five? Yeah. Twenty thirteen. I'm going with 2013. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually almost certain of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's five years. Yeah, I knew, I knew it. 2013. Yeah, 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 yeah sure. We yeah, definitely yeah, did. Yeah, we got it. Video. Shut up. Or, or Shut your mouth. <laughs> and then Red Dead was three years before that. 2000. Well, like that's 2010. Red, Red, yeah. Red Dead Revolver was 2004. Red Dead Redemption was 2010. Whoa, so me and Caboose know our video game release dates, apparently. So, yeah. <laughs> well, then, well, then, maybe we should get a video game trivia <laughs> <Trivia's laughs> showdown. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it's a long five, so another two, three years, probably. So What, since this one came out now? No, 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 for GTA 6. 6, yeah, yeah. Uh, then so it's I would gonna say... Be... Where would you like it to be set? I know this is going completely off topic. Well, seeing as we got this one in LA, which a GTA 5 being in LA was the best thing ever because I played GTA 5 the year I moved. I moved to oh, LA damn. in 2013. So I was like discovering oh, shit in LA awesome. through GTA. And I was discovering <laughs> shit in GTA <laughs> through like, LA oh, at yeah. the same time. Um, but yeah, where would you guys like it to be set if it was set in a, a state or uh, whether it was in America, Canada, whatever? Grand Theft Auto on Canada would be work. wild as shit. Everyone would be so nice. Yeah. <laughs> All the NPCs, no one would want to kill you. It'd be amazing. New York uh, I'd, City, I'd like maybe? to go back to New York. Yeah, New, York. New York, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd like to go back to maybe like Chicago. Yeah, uh, Chicago might be good. I mean, the funny thing too is that everyone forgets because of how big GTA Five is and how big um, Red Dead uh, is. Everyone forgets about LA Noir. L.A. Noir, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, that was set in L.A., but obviously old times are. We we just had John Noble in, uh, who was he played the main boss. The, oh really? Head, yeah. The oh, that's boss, cool. And, yeah. So is he also the voice of Scarecrow? And yes, in he Arkham is. Knight? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's awesome. So yeah, I will guess two thousand twenty-one. Uh, yeah, two thousand twenty-one. Yeah, at the very earliest, yeah, yeah, another 2021, two years. Yeah. But like you say, look at the amount of other shit. Like the way that technology has developed over the last ten years, it's going to exponentially keep developing. So I mean, we can say we we don't really have any data to say that it takes three years and then five years. We're just saying that because of the way that technology is developed. That technology yeah. could now develop twice as fast, and we could be getting a new game by Grand 2020 if Grand we Theft wanted Auto to. Grand VR. Yeah, yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? I, I, that, I don't think, I don't know if that's, yeah, I think the way that technology changes is what's going to adapt and evolve the way that the games are going to come out. Uh, yeah. All right. All right. Uh, Jill87 asks, in your opinion, is the omission of NPC vendors going to hurt the overall experience of Fallout 76? Specifically is- vendors or NPCs in general? Because, like, vendors, I never, like... First of all, uh, in Fallout, I rarely bought shit from people, and I rarely sold stuff. Even if oh, I had really? like a, yeah, even if I had a surplus of stuff. I have so much caps when yeah, I play Fallout. So many caps I, all the time. The only thing I really need is ammo, so that's the only thing I'll buy off yep. of people. I have plenty of stim packs. I have plenty of right away. I have plenty of everything else. Only need ammo. I'll buy it. So I don't need a tar- Honestly, the vendors are the NPCs that I deal with the less. I I just like NPCs from a story perspective in terms of engaging with them and t- them telling me a story it just gets me more motivated to accomplish a mission correct i'm with you on that 100 yeah the vendors i'm not too bothered by um 
I wasn't collecting my stuff. I was just using the modded chemistry station to just go pick it uh. up instead. Best way to do it. So much more fun. Um, and then, yeah, I just, I do, I will miss the NPCs a lot. I very much so. You got to, I mean, you, the, the NPCs were so detailed in the last one, you got to sleep with one of them. Mm. Like, it's just ridiculous how much effort they actually put into it. So now I'm upset that they didn't really have the effort for it this time. Yeah, and they chose a different direction. Yeah. All right. Uh, Strange Play asks, if you could put any character into the Spider-Man DLC story as a playable character, who would it be? My picks are Spider-Gwen or Daredevil. Damn. Ooh. I mean, I don't know who's, because I haven't played it, so I don't know who's in it. And so, Venom. so you can't play, you, you can't play Miles Morales Spider-Man? You can't, no, you can't, you, you just as, as a, he side doesn't character. have, yeah, side as character. As a human, yeah, yeah just normal. Um, so you can play as Miles, you can play as MJ, and then obviously Spidey. But um, I mean, Miles Miles Morales as Spider Man is is an easy pick. But that's just it's still Spider Man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I do agree. Venom would be cool. Yes. From, from I was thinking because because I know uh, me and Caboose we both said Daredevil in our other video uh, as yeah. a character. I was thinking like maybe Moon Knight. That'd be Ooh, that'd be easy. That'd, be, that'd cool. be easy to like throw in a DLC. Well, I mean, I'd like to even see him bring in like Rhino, Shockwave, like some of the original Spider Man ah. characters that we remember from the Amazing Spider Man. And like, gotta play, play the game, Jazz. Oh, play as them? Play as them, yeah. Oh, yeah, that'd yeah. be dope. Because I remember you said Rhino's in it, the way you have to yeah. fight him, but yeah. then go and play it as It would be pretty cool. Instead. Play as the villains or play something. Play as the, play the villain villains. side instead. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. That would be pretty sweet. All right. We'll yeah, I don't know. Oh, I guess oh. my main pick would probably be Venom just because it's Venom. It's Venom yeah. You know? <laughs> just look cool. His powers would be yeah, cool. Yeah, exactly. Ultimate Spider Man is before Spider Man PS4, my favorite Spidey game. So. The Ultimate Spider Man was. Yeah. yeah. Well, in, in the Ultimate Spider Man, you get to play as Venom. Yeah. So, yeah. That's what makes it. <laughs> so all right. Gives it um, yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, Luke. Uh, Luke ask. Luke Hancock ask. With Fallout Four out in 2015 and Fallout 76 out this year, when do you think we'll see Starfield and Elder Scrolls Six? Well, Starfield is not going to be no, until the yeah. next generation for sure. That's they've already said that. Yeah. Elder, Elder Scrolls, Scrolls is... Six. That might be a. That might be something maybe coming in the next. Year two. I didn't mean, they say something at E3 about it? You, yeah, they, did, they did, but they didn't show anything other than the landscapes. Yeah. Um, let me see. Elder Scrolls. Well, they've got that Elder Scrolls Blades or whatever it is that's coming out. The one where you can yeah, play on your phone. Yeah, that's on your phone. Uh, let's see. Elder Scrolls 6 is a long way off. That's what it says. For sure, Starfield is until next year. When do you guys think next generation will come? Shit, how long has it been now the PS4? A minute. Um, it's been five years of the PS4. Maybe end of, uh, end within of the next two years. Yeah, we'll end see. of 2019, see early 2020. 2020. Yeah, yeah, I'd like early. to say 2020. It's spring, a nice year. Spring 2020. It's a nice year as well. It sounds cool. I'd like to see. They'll, they... they'll probably release the next gen. I, I think again in the fall time with what they did with the PlayStation yeah. 4 mm. and Xbox One because you're right around the corner to Christmas Correct. and sales Perfect just marketing release. jump. Yeah. 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 So either 2019 fourth quarter or 2020 fourth quarter. Yeah, and you cool. next year a new PlayStation. No, no, that's, no. yeah, I the year think, after. Yeah, end of twenty twenty. End of twenty twenty. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, that's. And yeah. you have to hit that sub sub four hundred price. The what? The, the sub four hundred price. One of the big problems with the Xbox is I think they oh, launched they? it. Goes they launched over. it like five ninety nine or whatever it was. Was it five ninety nine or four ninety nine? Four ninety nine. Yeah. So it's it's just one of those. I only want to pay four hundred. Forget the thing that is, extra hundred. Well, the thing is, is it, it's one of those things where they don't want to lose that money, but at the same time, what they don't realize is, then you don't get market share, and then you lose out on the market share, and then you're kicking yourself later because you didn't want to drop yes. off that extra hundred bucks yeah. of it. Yeah. So. All right, and uh, the last question is from Stephen Stills, and I guess we kind of talked about this last week as well. Uh, they asked, "What are your th thoughts on the the crunch controversy at Rockstar?" The what? The crunch, like the hundred hours. Crunch. Oh, oh yeah. the time hours. crunch. Yeah, that they we, had we, in we there. talked about that. I mean, honestly, I think it's standard practice. Dude, in when you gotta get a job industry. done, you gotta get a job done. They're getting paid enough money. They're doing what they love doing. They want to be game designers. I mean, we're here. I mean, don't get me wrong. We're never here a hundred hours mm. in the office a week, but sometimes we're here doing twelve-hour days, mm, yeah. and we don't go home and be like, "Oh, I just had to do a twelve-hour day." We're doing what we love and we appreciate it, and yeah. I think that's what these developers and these designers are doing as well. I mm -hmm. don't think they're upset that they have to work their ass off. I think they almost sometimes would enjoy to. I'd actually also love to get Mark's perspective because yeah. he worked at Rockstar to see if like that was something that, you know, just like it, it happens. It's crunch time. And, and I did see too that there was like a follow-up to this and that 
a bunch of employees working at Rockstar came out, I think, to Kotaku and just said, like, hey, we we love what we were doing. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah we worked 100 hour weeks. It was it was a little tough, but it and wasn't it's not the for, whole time. It's just yeah, it wasn't for the full it's, it's, four years or five years of development. It's what yeah. happens. It's what happened. We went we, we had to go to Austin just for RTX and we're doing like no 18 sleep. hour yeah. days, like oh, three hour bro. night sleep because you have to edit. You have to mingle. You have to do this. You have to do that. Like, it's a job. It's you, fine. It's it's yeah. You just nut up or shut up type of scenario. <laughs> I think it's just one of those things. Part of uh, whether it's like video game or entertainment industry stuff, movie, television. It's it's part of the game. And like, no, it shouldn't be something that's like all the time. But you know, certain times. I'm 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 pretty sure for movies, when it comes down to the post production, correct before the 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 movie comes out, especially for VFX. Mm-hmm. Those people are crunching that shit. People who do day dailies. And night, man. Well, people who do dailies, right? So on big yeah. films, you have to have that editor who is literally next to the director who edits a whole scene every single day. Those people get paid considerable amounts of money because they are literally sat in front of sat in front of a computer twenty four seven, nonstop, just constantly editing, and that's why they get compensated the way that they do. Mm. Yeah. All right, all right, guys. Uh, I think that's that's it, right? Yeah. That's all right, guys. Thanks. Let's go play Red Dead. <laughs> yeah. Everybody leave. Everybody yeah. go home. All right, I'll see you guys. <laughs> so, yeah, thanks for everyone who's been watching or listening. We'll definitely have much more Red Dead coverage, Red Dead 2. Caboose is having a kind of first impressions video coming out uh, pretty soon. We're going to play some more Fallout 76 beta this weekend. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try and get... I don't know what, when I'm going to get time to play Assassin's Creed because now that Red Dead's here, plus the Fallout 76 beta, it's a... <laughs> It's a yeah. It's a it's it's a crazy. Looks time like for a hundred hour work weekend for you, Dennis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> work weekend, yeah. um, so uh, let's go around the table and tell everyone where you can find uh, yourself, Jack. Uh, at Jack Hind, J A C K H I N D. Feel free to tweet us. Whatever you want to do, come Dor- follow us. Dorian. Uh, Dorian Parks and Rec. Parks. And with the letter N, rec, because Parks and Rec is better than the office. That's my slag line, tagline. Get out of here. Yeah, yeah, don't worry about it, Caboose. I'm with you on that one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and our newest member, Caboose, where can people find you online? Oh, Dennis, uh, yeah, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Caboose EK, the letters E and then K, no spaces or anything like that. Um, and you can find me tweeting about how the office is actually better than Parks and Rec. Hey, uh, yeah, nice. there we go, Caboose. Uh, all right, guys, you can find me on Twitter at think here or Instagram, Dennis.TZNG. Yeah, follow Collider Games. Uh, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll be posting more and more videos about Red Dead and Fallout and And we'll everything. have Xboxes Co- next week, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. Uh, giving away some Xboxes, talking about Xboxes. Uh, PS4, where, where are you at? Where, where... Don't look at me, you Team gotta Xbox. Ho- you gotta... <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to like, so hook us up so we can give stuff away. Yeah, come on, PS4. Um... Yeah, uh, and make sure to subscribe to our podcast network. We have uh, podcasts uh, for a lot of different stuff. Movie talk, TV talk, uh, Jedi Council, Heroes, Sports. Uh, This Collider Games is on the the factory feed, so you can subscribe there. So until next time, we'll see you guys later. Peace.